Today, we'll be going through the entire process of how to short stock within Thinkorswim. We'll first begin by learning how to open up a brand new short position, how to close it out once the time actually comes, and then finally, we'll learn how to use the Active Trader tool to make the entire process so much quicker. Beginning with opening up a brand new short position, we just need to keep in mind that shorting is essentially just selling shares of stock that you don't currently own. Then at a later date, you're hoping that you can buy it back at a much lower price than you sold it for and then profit the difference. Within Thinkorswim, we can basically do this on every single page, but more often than not, you'll probably be looking at a chart when you're doing this. So we'll first begin by coming up here to the Charts tab, and then looking down here below, you can see I currently have AMD pulled up. Within the Charts page, the absolute simplest way to open up a brand new trade is simply by coming up here to the current price of the stock, so right here, 67.36, and simply clicking on that number. You'll notice that as soon as we do, we get a drop down menu with a bunch of different options down here, whether it be to just buy the stock, sell the stock, or to create a more advanced order using these custom tabs. Keeping in mind that shorting a stock is just selling shares of stock that we don't own, all we have to do to short a stock within Thinkorswim is hit the sell button. There's not gonna be a special button that says short, we simply need to hit sell. And as soon as we do, you'll notice an order ticket pops up down at the very bottom of the screen to actually sell that position. Within that red line, we'll then be able to specify how many shares we wanted to short. We can then specify the price we wanted to sell it for, the order type we wanted to use, and how long and when we wanted that order good for. So coming back over to the far left hand side, let's first begin by specifying how many shares we wanted to short. In this case, I'm gonna go ahead and adjust this number down to, let's say 25 shares. After we fill in the quantity, we can then come back over to the right and actually specify the order type we wanna use. In this case, you can see I am currently using a limit order. And that simply means that we are specifying a price. I am saying I only wanna short this stock if I can get it for this price or better, 67.32 or better. If I didn't want to short it at the current price, I could also adjust this. I could double click on the number here and say I only want to short AMD if I can short it for, let's say $70 or better. So that now means I am not going to short this stock unless AMD goes back up to 70. So essentially move back up about $2.70 a share. Within Thinkorswim, there are quite a few other order types you could use and we would access them by coming over here to the word limit and then in the list down below, you can see all of the other order types available. The very first in the list you'll notice is a market order, and that simply means we want to outright sell these shares immediately and we'll take whatever the current price is. Just keep in mind that you cannot use a market order in the pre and post market. It'll only be good from 9.30 to 4 p.m. Eastern time. After that, we've got the limit order, which we've already talked about, and then below that, we've got the stop, stop limit, trailing stop, and trailing stop limit all of which are generally gonna be used to protect the position, to get you out before you lose too much money. So in this example, since we're shorting, it would be when the price goes back up. So in the event I were to actually short this stock at 70, I could say buy it back if it ever goes up to 75, cause I don't wanna lose any more money. The other two right below that, MOC and LOC, that's gonna stand for market on close and limit on close. And I'm gonna save that for a later video cause I would honestly be shocked if any of you out there watching ever use either of these order types. And for right now, we're actually gonna leave this example set to a limit order. So come back up here and select limit. Finally, the very last thing I need to adjust is the time in force, which currently is marked as a day order only. A day order simply means if this order does not fill by 4 p.m. Eastern time, just go ahead and cancel the order. I don't want to try again tomorrow. I don't want it active for the pre or post market. If I instead clicked on that, you're going to see quite a few other different time and force options available, whether it be GTC, which stands for good until canceled. That type of order will actually go out every single day until it fills from 9.30 a.m. to 4 p.m. Eastern time. However, it still won't be good for the pre and post market, and that's what the next two order types are for. EXT, which is essentially just a day order that also includes the pre and post market. Then you've got a GTC plus EXT, which is again a GTC order that also includes the pre and post market. For the example today, we'll just go ahead and stick with a day order only. Come back up here and select day. And now that everything looks good, we will simply come back down here and hit the confirm and send button. 
That'll then bring up a little confirmation box just to confirm everything looks right. And up here at the top, we can see it's just telling us the exact same info we just filled out. Here it's saying I'm about to sell 25 shares AMD with a limit price of 70 bucks. And right below that, we can see it's gonna tie up about $779 of buying power to do this trade. Since that looks good and I'm happy with it, I will simply come down here and hit the send button in the lower right hand corner. As soon as we do that, we can see the order has been submitted either by looking up here at the very top of our chart. So right here is my order ticket to sell those 25 shares or by coming back over here to the monitor page in the upper left hand corner. And then looking down below in the working order section, we can see our open order to sell those 25 shares of AMD at $70. Heading back over to the chart for just a second, if I were to come down here and actually zoom out a little bit on this chart, we can see a better picture of where that order is resting. So right here, it's resting at $70 a share. Now, if I wanted to edit that order in some way, I could do it a couple different ways, whether it be by right clicking on the ticket itself, then coming down below and hitting cancel order to just outright cancel it or cancel slash replace to edit it in some way. Or I could also just come over here to the chart and actually just click on the order and drag it up or drag it down to the new price I want to adjust it to. So in this example today, if I wanted to get filled on this order, I could just drag it down to roughly the current price of AMD right now. So right now I dragged it down to, it looks like 67.44. And if I were to let go, I can now confirm in the order confirmation box that I want to adjust it down to 67.44, then come down and hit send. Now that I did that, I can see the order ticket has filled by looking in the upper left hand corner. And if I were to go back to the monitor page at the very top left hand corner of our screen, here we'll now be able to see all of our current and open positions. And if I look down below and I find AMD for just a second, we can right here see my open position negative 25 shares of AMD. So this is exactly what a short position is going to look like. It is going to have a negative number in front of it. To the right of that, we can also see the price at which I filled at. So over here, you can see I sold those shares for 67.61. And now I'm hoping that AMD continues to go down and I can hopefully at a later date, buy those back at a much lower price. Now, unfortunately, it looks like AMD is actually moving against me. We can see it's currently trading at 67.82, which is why I'm currently down about six bucks. So let's say I wanted to cut my losses. I wanted to get out of this AMD position and just close the short position. There are a few different ways to do that, but from this screen alone, we would simply come over to the actual symbol for AMD and go ahead and right click on it. From there, we're just gonna look in the little menu on the right hand side and find the button mark, create a closing order. To the right of that, we will then see a few different closing order templates. And that's all that this is. It is an order template to close out the position. So for example, the top one is gonna to be a limit order, the second one is gonna build out a stop, and then the third one is gonna be an OCO bracket order or a profit-taking stop loss order. For the most part, the one you guys are gonna use most often is gonna be the very top line, the very simple one that says buy back my 25 shares of AMD using a limit order. Now, as soon as we click on that, you'll again see we immediately get taken to the trade page and the order ticket to buy back this short is down at the very bottom of the screen. Here it is simply saying we are going to buy back those 25 shares. We're going to do so using a limit order and we're going to buy them back at the current price of 67.83. Now, just to make sure we do in fact get filled because I do want to get out of this short position immediately, we'll come over here and flip this over from a limit order to a market order. So now I'm essentially saying, get me out of this short. I'll take whatever the current price is. I just don't want these shares anymore. And now that I'm happy with that, we'll just come down here and hit confirm and send then hit send one more time. And now looking in the upper left, you can see we just bought back that short position. And down here at the bottom of our trade page, it says we have zero shares of AMD. So that is gonna be the simple way to create a brand new short and then buy it back once the time comes. But let's go ahead and bring all of that together and learn how to do it much, much faster using the Active Trader tool. We'll first need to open the tool itself by coming up here to the top right hand side of our screen and opening up the charts tab. From there, we'll be able to find the active trader tool by looking on the far right hand side of our chart and clicking on the button marked active trader or for you, it might say AT. 
As soon as we do, we will see the Active Trader window pop up over here on the left hand side with a bunch of market order buttons at the top to place our trades very quickly or a pricing ladder down below to place limit orders or stops. Now I'm going to be going through this very quickly. So if you want a much more in-depth look at the Active Trader ladder, go ahead and check out my other video covering this because I am going to go through it pretty quick. Beginning with the buttons up here at the very top of our screen, again, these are all going to be our market orders. So these are going to be used to place our trades much, much quicker than simple limit orders or stop orders. The first two buttons, the buy market and sell market buttons, are obviously used to place market orders at whatever share quantity we have in this box right here. So if we were to hit buy market right now, we're going to buy 10 shares, sell market, we're going to sell 10 shares. The cancel button is going to be used to cancel any working orders that you have on this stock right now. The reverse button would be used to completely flip your position. So if you were short, you now want to go long. If you were long, you now want to go short. Next, we have the flatten button, which is kind of like your fail safe button. It's to get you out completely and cancel any working orders you have on this particular stock. Right below that, we can then specify how many shares we're buying or selling anytime we click on any of those buttons. And then finally, we've got the auto send button, which allows us to place the trades instantly. No order confirmations. Now to make sure you have a good idea of what those buttons do and what it's going to look like when you press them, let's go ahead and first check mark the auto send button. And then what I want to do next is actually place a couple trades. So first off, if we just wanted to short 10 shares of AMD right now, all we have to do is come up here and hit the big red sell market button. You'll notice that as soon as I clicked on that, as soon as I hit that button, the order instantaneously filled. I immediately shorted 10 shares of AMD and I filled at 67.72. Later down the line, if I wanted to cover that position, so basically buy back those shares, I would simply come up here and hit the buy market button. Looking down below in the position section, we can now see I am back to zero shares of stock. So I'm completely out of that short position. Doing it again, if I came back up here and hit sell market, and then hit it a second time, we can now see down below I am short 20 shares of stock. Now if I wanted to close out all 20 shares, what I could do is come up here and hit the flatten button, which is just going to get me back to zero shares of stock. Whatever I currently have, get me back to zero. Now for those of you who might not want to use just simple market orders, you might want to place limit orders or stops to get into the position, we could do that by coming down here below to the pricing ladder where all these prices are listed out right down the center of the screen. First off, you'll notice the current price of the stock is going to be highlighted in gray. So currently 67.83, but it's of course always changing. To the left, we're going to see all of the open buy orders in the green column. Then to the right, we can see all of the open sell orders in the red column or the asking column. In order for us to place limit orders or stops, we simply need to click to the left or right of the price that we want to buy or sell for. So for example, if I wanted to place a limit order to short this stock, if it ever went up to, let's say 68 bucks a share, I would simply find 68 in the center here, then go ahead and move my mouse to the right and click in the little red box to the right. That'll immediately place a sell order to short 10 shares of AMD if it ever goes up to 68 bucks a share. Not only can we see it in the active trader window on the right hand side there, but we can also see it on the chart on the left hand side as well. Within the chart, I could even adjust that order by clicking on it and then dragging up or dragging down to the new price I want to adjust it to. So for example, if I were to adjust it all the way up to looks like $69.02, if I were to let go here, my order has now been moved all the way up here to the top. To cancel it, we'll simply hit the little X button on the right hand side. And now our order has been canceled. Now, for those of you watching who might want to place much more advanced trades using this Active Trader ladder, we do have a way to create templates. So we could create an advanced order that puts out both a profit taking order and a stop loss order all rolled into one. So to do that, we would simply come over here to the Active Trader ladder and find the button marked template single. You'll notice that as soon as I click on it, a little menu appears down below with a bunch of different templates that Thinkorswim has made for me. Below that, the ones that say plus 5% or 10 shares, these are actually the ones that I've created for myself. Now to see what this looks like and how it works, if we were to come up here and click on the one mark trigger with bracket, this is going to be a very simple profit taking stop loss order. 
So what it's saying within this little window here, it's saying that not only do I want to buy or in this case short the stock, I also want to buy it back if it ever hits a dollar profit target or get stopped out if I ever hit a $1 stop target. To adjust that, we would simply click in the box we wanted to change. So in this case, if we always wanted to take, let's just say 50 cents a profit or get stopped out if it ever goes against us by, let's say 25 cents, I'm gonna go ahead and throw in 25 cents here. To see that in action, we'll simply come up here and hit the sell market button. So again, I'm saying I wanna short 10 shares of stock immediately and I'll take whatever the current price is. But then as soon as that order fills, I wanna put out an order to buy it back at a 50 cent profit or get stopped out if it ever goes up 25 cents. So let's go ahead and click on that button to actually see it play out. And you'll notice that as soon as I did, we could see our opening trade filled. I just shorted 10 shares of stock at the current price, 68.19. However, now moving our mouse over to the left and looking at our chart, we can also see our profit taking order and our stop loss order displayed right here on the chart. So down below is our profit taking order and it looks like it's sitting at $67.69. Then above that, we've got the stop order saying if it ever goes up, and in this case, if it ever goes up to $68.44, get me out because I don't want to lose any more money. Just like anything else, if we wanted to edit those orders in some way, like let's say the time came that I just wanted to outright close this thing out, I could of course just come down here to the limit order and drag it up to the current price. So right here, if I were to drag it up to, it looks like 68.35 and let go, that order should fill immediately. But again, the Active Trader tool is a much more advanced way to place your trades incredibly fast, but it is gonna take a little bit of practice to really get the hang of it. I know I went through that Active Trader pretty quick, but go ahead and check out one of my other videos that goes much more in depth on it if you wanted to get a better breakdown of what each of these buttons do. Hopefully after all that, you at least feel a little bit more comfortable with how to play shorts within Thinkorswim, but if you do still have questions, just let me know down below. Also, if you were looking to learn more in the meantime, YouTube seems to think you'll find this next video helpful as well, so go ahead and check it out. But that's it for now. Have a great rest of your week, everyone, and I'll catch you on the next video.